Good morning, everyone. I'm Xiao Gu from the China University of Mining and Technology. I am very honored to be have the opportunity to communicate with you. The topic of my research is the special of temper and the temporal difference is in public response to release type communication to stop food waste. I will introduce my research for uh, four paths, including introduction, research design, data analysis, conclusions, and suggestions. Let's look at the first part of the research, the background of the research. According to the China Urban Food Waste Report in 2018, China's urban creating industry wasted 17 to 18 million tons of food at the table alone, equal to the amount of food consumed by 30 to 50 million people per year. Avoiding food waste is an important part of plan for responding to food security. It is worth noting that food waste means not only the waste of food itself, but also the ineffective consumption of water, land, energy, and other means of production used to produce these foods, as well as the resulting environmental pollution and a large amount of greenhouse gas emissions. Therefore, how to effectively deal with the problem of public food waste is an important issue of common interest and concern for the whole society. In the context of such serious food waste, it is necessary to implement some measures to intervene in individual behaviors. Communication is an important way to intervene in individual behavior and decision making. Release type communication is a common way to get public saving behavior. The public psychology and the behavior response to release type communication to stop food waste reflects the effectiveness of policy. Due to the limitation of data source, the relevant equilibration research shows the limitation of regions and time period. There is a need to use new technologies to refine set a research on public response to stop food worst release type communication. To sum up, combined with the attitude reaction model of the public attention, support, and implementation, this study will explore the characteristics of public response to release type communication to stop food waste based on the perspective of temporal and spatial differences. Next, I want to talk about the research method of this article. This study used big data mining technology to obtain public release data, overcome the limitations of regions and time period in prior studies. Uh, this paper conducted response research based on the emotion dictionary analysis math, known from how net emotion vocab vocabulary and combined with corpus text to expand emotional words. We built a domain emotion dictionary for stop food worst behavior from two dimensions of the stop support intention and the implementation intention. The date of this study come from the Weibo platform. We select relevant terms such as food worst as keywords for date growing and obtain more than 25,000 entries, including original Weibo con contents and Weibo comments. In the next section, I will talk about the data analysis part of this study. The public response after release type communication was divided into five stages. They are, uh, they are the incubation period, outbreak period, recession period, second outbreak period, and feeding period. Let's take a look at this picture. This picture combines a column chart and a line chart. We can easily find that the total circle of support intention is negative in the outbreak period and positive in, in other period, where the implementation intention has a positive total circle at each stage and the infectation point appears in the recession period. In order to further clarify the, the law of its internal response over time, these people introduced empiric model discomposition mass for the research. It is found that the time series of the public support intention and the implementation intention are nonlinearly. Based on this, this study used EMD mass to discompose the public support intention and the implementation intention. Through the support intention, empiric model discomposing figure, 
we can see that the public support intention of really stop communication to stop food waste gradually decreased over time. Combined with the tax, it is found that public have positive attitudes toward really stop communication to stop food waste in January. Uh, the measures taken by local organizations in the response process have aroused uh, dissatisfaction, which has led to the uh, gradual decrease in support intention. Through the implementation intention, uh, empiric model this for certain figure, we can see that individual would evaluate his behavior after the behavior was performed, if he was satisfied with his behavior a good habit would be formed. Otherwise, he would return to the presentation stage. Now let's take a look at the spatial difference analysis. Obviously, combined with the eastern regions, western regions are elevated scarce in results, so the public in western regions may be more willing to reduce worst and save salt results. The changes of the public support and the implementation intention in different regions are analysis before and after release type communication. Eating behavior was uh, uh, it was two minutes left, by the way. Okay, thank you. By social environment and the psychology environment, I scanned first and second hometown of overseas China's. Guangdong and Fujian not only have a development economic, but also have from a unique culture and eating behavior, such as drinking soap before meals and eating games. However, the measures to, to stop food waste may restrict the local public source of food. The study also analyzes the changes in the public intention to implementation before and after the, the release type communication about stopping food waste in different regions and analyzes the the significant uh, lifts of change in the public intention in implementation response in each region's use t test. In addition, we also have some interesting findings. Whether in the process of time difference is analysis or special difference analysis, public implementation intention is greatly higher than uh, support intention. Finally, I will describe the conclusions of this research. First, with release type communication, the public concern to the issue of food waste has gone through five stages, incubation period, outbreak period, recession period, secondary outbreak period, and feeding period. Second, the public concern of the emotion performance to food waste are different in different regions, which is currently related to the regional economic development leap. In summary, this study put forward the following suggestions. First, the, the government can conduct a more fine-grained survey on the characteristics of public response after the release type communication. Uh, second, the effect of this type communication has different its characteristic. Uh, this spare local government to design and implement different government's plans. Third, the government should balance the public support intention and implementation intention in guiding the behavior to stopping food waste. Uh, the above is content of my report Report today. Now my report is over. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Any questions? Again, we're going to have time for a quick question. All right, guess we will be thinking about the question and uh, ask them all at the end of the session. All right, let's hear from our third speaker, Wen Fan Su from Renmin University of China. The floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Su Wen Fan, Wen Fan Su, and I'm from Renmin University of China. Today, my topic is influencing factors of willingness to pay for plant-based milk in China. And I'd like Could to- you please share your screen, please? Oh, yes. Sorry, uh, wait a minute. Can you see my screen? Uh, no. 
it seems like you have started screen sharing, but we, yes, there we go. Okay. I like to uh, divide my presentation into these six, uh, six parts. To start with, let me introduce the background of our study. Plant-based milk has developed rapidly due to the abundance of these raw materials such as rice, almonds, um, soybeans, and other kinds of plant-based uh, extract, and its unique taste and uh, the uh, nutritional health and environmental friendliness. Plant-based milk uh, is lactose-free, so it is a better choice for those who are lactose intolerant or allergic to milk proteins. And it has have a lower GHG emissions than milk and can save the natural resources of land, water, and can make our environment more sustainable. So under the lots of um, band, uh, brand layout of plant-based milk in the global market, a better understanding of consumers' willingness to pay and how key factors affect uh, consumers' purchase behavior are needed uh, to promote the sustainable consumption of this kind of products. To achieve this, we measured consumers' willingness to pay uh, for plant-based milk through this um, bilateral dichotomy based on cultivate evaluation method. And we explain which attributes of consumer preferences can affect their willingness to pay. And lastly, we explored effective strategies to catch the opportunities of sustainable plant-based milk developed. In our study, we used the contagion valuation method. It can be used to estimate the market price for a stated preference of consumers. And under this principle, the double-bounded dichotomous choice method is used to measure the willingness to pay for plant-based milk. And based on the stochastic utility theory, we establish this model. And the U1 represents the, the utility of people choosing the plant-based milk, and the U0 represents the utility consumers choosing other uh, pretend drinks. And X represents the key explanatory factors that affect uh, consumers' utility. And the bid is used to indicate how much more consumers are willingness to pay, that is, paying a premium. And based on our pre-research on the types and prices of plant-based milk, we set 7.457 CMY as our average market price. And we set four initial prices according to, the, to this uh, average market price. And uh, we uh, gave them the first inquiry of the initial prices, and then we gave them the second inquiry according to the answer of this first uh, answer. And here is our survey questionnaire. We divided uh, into four parts. Uh, the first part is uh, that we explain the basic information and its e ecological value of plant-based milk. And the second part is consumers' preference of the attributes of plant-based milk products from these six dimensions, that is, the appearance form, the sensory characteristic, the purchase convenience, purchase price, and environmental benefits and the nutrition value. And this will this were measured by the Likert five point scale. And the third part is consumers' willingness to pay through the double boundary dichotomy. And the, the fourth part, the fourth part is our uh, demographic characteristics of consumers, which uh, which were our control materials, uh, control variables, and we uh, set our uh, survey region as Jingjingji Mortuar Palatine region, and we have eight uh, eight hundred and nineteen uh, in total as our questionnaire numbers. And uh, uh, according to our data, we find that uh, the higher the first price randomly appears, the fewer people answer yes. 
but this re uh, re reduction range gradually decreases and it was in line with the law of diminishing ma um, marginal effect. And we can see from the table, it has a polarization uh, form because uh, when, when people accept uh, this kind of products, they like to uh, pay uh, accept uh, as well, even though they will pay a higher price. And we uh, set our uh, double bounded uh, double bounded dichotomous willingness to be function model, and this is our dependent variable and independent variables. And we also collected our control variables. Uh, the estimation results uh, show that there are three significant factors. The effect of purchase convenience is positive and significant, indicating that it positively promotes the willingness to pay for plant-based milk. But in contrast, the, the purchase price is significant, but not uh, but negative. So it means that consumers who pay more attention to the price uh, are willing to pay a higher price for plant-based milk. Mm. But consumers' attributes preference for environmental benefits have a significant positive effect on willingness to pay. And there are also three, um, uh, three factors that is not uh, significant. That is uh, parents' form, sensory characteristics, and uh, nutrition value. Uh, these are not uh, these are not, not significant, so uh, this aspects that we have to uh, improve. And we, also okay. and we also collected uh, uh, some uh, demographic uh, characteristics of consumers as follows. After that, we calculate the willingness to pay uh, in our study. That is about uh, 6.069 uh, CMI per um, 250 millimeters. So compared to our average market price of 7.45 CMI, uh, there is some gap between the average willingness to pay for plant-based milk um, calculate in our study, and it shows the characteristic of high, grade, high ground uh, products. Okay, uh, in our study, we have to uh, calculate the willingness to pay and find the price it's lower than the existing average market price. So we should further reduce the costs of this, uh, uh, of this production of plant-based milk in transportation, storage, loss, and other back-end links in the supply chain. And we also have to develop some new technologies to achieve the mass production of plant-based milk. Secondly, we can uh, make some sustainable information integration and broadcasting. It will play an important role in uh, enabling consumers to cultivate this sustainable consumption behavior. Um, to be specific, we can um, use some combination of uh, carbon food labels or environmental taxes. And thirdly, further studies can proceed from the willingness to pay ex um, elicitation machinism. Uh, uh, for example, uh, design choice experiments or auction experiment. All in all, um, the estimation results show that the main attributes uh, significantly affecting consumers' willingness to pay are purchase price, purchase convenience, and environment benefits. And um, uh, surprisingly, consumers who uh, um, pay more attention to the price are unwilling to pay a higher price and who recognize the environmental benefits of these products will be more willing to pay. And secondly, the average overall willingness to pay in our study are about 6.069 CPI and much lower than the average market price, which is uh, 7.45 CPI. And our results can provide a, a reference for market pricing and we can form the empirical evidence of plant-based sustainable consumption and allow to draw applications for the marketing of plant-based products. Yeah.
Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions? Oh, would you come up to the stage? It's very quick. Um, Hi. Uh, Hi. Thanks for your presentation. Just one quick question. I saw a negative coefficient on education in your table. Do you yes. have a comment on that? Yes, Thanks. yes. Very good question. So we know that more um, the higher uh, education level, the less uh, willingness of the, the, their uh, willing, uh, willingness to pay. So I think uh, the people with lower education level will have the um, better perception of this product. They may think it's more um, nutritious uh, or uh, it's a better uh, product. So they will pay more uh, money. If the people with higher education level, they will know um, more about this product. So we'll, uh, they will have the, um, they will not have more willingness to pay, to pay the higher price for these products. All right, thanks for your answer. Now let's move on to our next speaker, um, Jing Ho from Jiangsu Normal University. Whenever you're ready. Uh, uh, hello, can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Yao Chang Chang, uh, the co-author of this paper. Um, I come from Jiangsu Normal University. This is the topic of my presentation. Uh, I will report from five parts. The first, uh, the first part is the introduction. In recent years, the food safety risk caused by excessive vet uh, veterinary and antibiotics re residues in China's poultry industry have become increasingly prominent. We know that once the uh, real use of antibiotics exceed the standard, it uh, will seriously threaten human health and can also cause other hazards. Therefore, reducing the use of uh, veterinary antibiotics is an important requirement to ensure the quality and the safety of poultry products from the source. Using antibiotic substitutes and uh, reducing the dosages of antibiotics are important measures prevent the products with excessive antibiotics re reduce from entering the food chain. However, in reality, many farmers are not active in reducing the use of antibiotics. Uh, one of the reasons uh, may be that farmers lack health risk information and uh, thus they usually have no motivation to engage in seed production. In this case, effective external information may correct farmers' excessive use behavior of antibiotics. In addition, uh, existing studies have shown that risk preference uh, affect farmers' decision making about uh, agricultural production behavior. And farmers with different risk preference may be affected by information acquisition in the choice of excessive of, or reduced use of antibiotics. Therefore, this study is, is uh, <coughs> to explore the factors affecting farmers' antibiotics reduction behavior from the perspective of risk preference and external information. The second part is about a theoretical framework. Mm, to achieve our objective, a conceptual model is uh, developed. <coughs> we propose two uh, hypotheses. First, we expect that the degree of risk aversion and loss aversion have significant negative impact on farmers' antibiotics reduction behavior. Because farmers' reduction the use of antibiotics may suffer the risk of reducing breeding production, increasing poultry mortality, uh, or decreasing animal product quality. So farmers with greater risk aversion are less likely to reduce the use of antibiotics. In addition, the prospect zero shows that people are more sensitive to loss than to gain in the decision-making process of reducing the use of antibiotics. The farmers with greater loss aversion are more <coughs> sensitive to the potential year reduction or the reduction of, of uh, product, product quality. 
than to the protection of health, and thus they are less likely to reduce the use of antibiotics. Second, we expect that information acquisition have a positive impact on farmers' antibiotics reduction behavior, because uh, when farmers acquire breeding health information through external channels, they may also acquire breeding management and other relevant knowledge and can improve their disease prevention awareness and tend to pay more attention to their own health. Thus, they are more likely to reduce the use of antibiotics. The third part is the description of data and methods. Our data is from a household survey and the economic field experiment of Chinese poultry farmers in Jiangsu province. In total, 633 valid samples were obtained. Uh, the experiment is used to measure farmers' risk preference. We use a well-established approach like that. Mm, this is the design of experiment. There are three series of paired lotteries. Each paired lottery consists of a, a safe reward and a risk reward. Farmers must make a choice between two options in each series. Mm, we describe farmers' risk preference based on prospect zero. <laughs> uh, the parameters uh, uh, the sigma is the standard measure of risk aversion. The bigger the sigma, the higher the degree of risk aversion. The parameter negma measures the degree of loss aversion. The bigger the negma, the higher the degree of loss aversion. <laughs> we must use uh, these parameters to measure risk preference. Uh, we estimated uh, these parameters according to methods ad adopted by classical uh, literature. We find that most farmers in our sample have a relatively high degree of risk and loss aversion. Uh, this is a description of uh, variables. Uh, dependent variables include uh, two kinds of reduction behavior. One is famous use of antibiotic substitutes. The other refers to farmers' reduction of antibiotic dosages. In our sample, 50% uh, of farmers uh, use the antibiotic substitutes, but only 10% of farmers reduce the antibiotic dosages. Um, the core ind independent variables uh, include risk aversion, loss aversion, and information acquisition. Hearing <coughs> um, that the dependent variables include two binary in indicators, we use the uh, biprobate model in empirical analysis. You have two minutes. Uh, okay. Uh, the results show that the degree of risk aversion and loss aversion have significant negative impact on both reduction behavior. That is, the high degree of risk aversion and loss aversion, the greater the probability of re reducing the use of antibiotics. Mm, this is uh, consistent with our expectation. Also in line with our expectation, the variable information acquisition has a significant positive impact on both reduction behavior. The result implies that uh, farmers' access to breeding health information through external channels helps to improve the probability of antibiotic substitutes uh, used and uh, antibiotics dosage reduction. Furthermore, we introduced the, the interaction terms of risk preference parameters and uh, information acquisition variable into the benchmark model. Uh, in addition, we, for, we further divide the samples into two groups according to breeding scale. <coughs> we find that information acquisition can promote the farmers' reduction behavior in both sub, sub, sam, samples. And for small scale farmers, uh, risk aversion and loss aversion has have significant ne negative impact on their reduction behavior. Uh, the last part is conclusions and implications. Um, in summary, we <coughs> use the biprobate model to analyze the factors affecting Chinese poultry farmers' antibiotics reduction behavior uh, as follows. <coughs> and uh, we <coughs> put forward suggestions to encourage farmers to reduce the use of uh, veterinary antibiotics, uh, <coughs> such as uh, the government uh, <coughs> 
the relevant departments and the other actions. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any questions? Any questions from online? All right. Guess we will move on to the next speaker for now. The next speaker is um, Dr. Shu Fen Tang from Nanjing Agricultural University. Yeah, I'm here. There we go. You can go ahead and uh, start sharing your screen. Okay. Um, can you help me? Yes. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. We are pleased to be here to make this presentation. Welcome to my presentation. My name is Shu Fen Tang, coming from Nanjing Agricultural University. The topic of my presentation is effects of higher minimum quality standards on food safety. Evidence from China's judgment documents. As shown in the picture, my presentation will include these six parts. One, introduction to national food safety standards in China. Three, theoretical analysis for data and empirical study. Five, estimation results. Six, conclu conclusion. One, introduction. Um, first, introduction. With economic development, many government agencies have introduced higher minimum quality standards for consumer health and safety. Um, minimum quality standards, um, the definition shows in table one and the prevent producers from selling products whose quality is below um, predefined standards that the average quality of the products has improved. It includes international standards, national standards, industry standards, local standards, association standards, and enterprise standards. Um, the first study on MQS introduced an asymmetric information market. Most of the literature on MQS focus on their impact on the uh, social welfare. Uh, however, there is still some literature that focuses on food quality. Uh, few studies have focused on food safety, the use, the benefit cost test to access whether the standards were efficient, and if so, which also had benefits for the food industry. The MQI system of this food industry is an essential guarantee for food safety. Excessive strict MQS might not protect consumer health and agricultural ecological environment or even harm food safety. However, no empirical economic method has been adopted to demonstrate the impact of MQS on food safety. Uh, this is the first study to empirically examine the impact of MQS on food safety in China. This study makes three main contributions to the literature. First, this is the first study to explore the impact on food safety from the perspective of MQS. Second, this is a data innovation. We took the per people of food criminal cases, which constitute uh, of judgment documents to express food safety data. Third, the purpose method is in a, uh, in innovative. We used the generalized difference in difference method to conduct economic policy evaluations of national food safety standards. Two national food safety standards in China. The national food safety standards is a type of public MQS in China. In this study, we conduct an empirical analysis of the impact of the higher MQS on food safety, considering that the increase in criminal profits leads to the more criminal acts for stricter regulation. Our counterfactual results offer guidance to policymakers on how to mitigate the potentially negative effects of MQS on food, particularly high value food. The Martin Safety Standard for Fresh Frozen Livestock and the Poultry Products GB 2707 to 2016 was implemented in 2016 instead of GB 2707 to, to 2005. Uh, this um, natural fruit, uh, this is um, the uh, this is the number of amount of criminal cases in China from 2013 to 2019. Um, three, um, this is the um, theoretical analysis. Um, 
the first equation, uh, the first um, equation, equation is uh, TR represent the individual produces total revolution from food crime. Um, and uh, this is uh, this is the last equation and and the uh, partial expansion de uh, derivative of pi and um, is greater uh, is greater than zero. So we um, conclude the proposition one when the increased food cost is greater than the increased regulatory pen penalty cost, higher MQS reduce the level of food safety. Uh, for um, data and uh, empirical studies, uh, data source um, food safety center, we used the per one billion people of mountain criminal cases in the province to represent food safety. We collected mountain criminal cases from the China judgments online from 2013 to 2019 under the same food standards, under the same French food standard, right? Um, and uh, additionally, there are reused per capita fiscal expenditures on public safety to represent the intensity, intensity of each pro, uh, province uh, supervisions. The fiscal expenditure and population data for each province come from the China Statistical Yearbook 2013 to 2019, GDP on employment rate, uh, urbanization rate and the urban rural income gap ratio data were obtained from the China Statistical Yearbook 2013 to 2019. Um, this is a descriptive analysis. Table three de definitions and the summary statistic, uh, statistics from 2013 to 2019. Uh, so the number is per one uh, billion people of modern criminal cases. This is important. Two minutes. Uh, okay. Um, empirical model specification and uh, the method. And the uh, method is generalized uh, difference in difference uh, person regression model. Uh, this is estimation results. We can see the intensify, uh, intensity and times uh, dumping. Uh, this is very uh, significant, uh, positive significance. Uh, this is table of um, effects of higher minimal quality on the food safety in different periods. Uh, this, uh, uh, this column, uh, this column uh, intensifies dormant and is uh, significant, and uh, this one is so uh, uh, significant. And uh, um, table six is estimation of price for test. Um, price for test, we can say uh, the test five price. Uh, dummy is not is not significant, and we can see the robust uh, robustness test estimation of robustness test. We can see the uh, intensified price dummy. Uh, this is uh, we uh, vary the different samples and at different times, and we can see uh, the this is very uh, significant. So, uh, conclusion remarks and policy implications. When the increased food cost is greater than the increased re regulatory penalty curse, higher MQS reduces the levels of uh, food safety. A place for test suggests that the uh, hypothetic issue time of the higher MQS is not significant, which means that a lower food safety level is not triggered by other factors only from the higher MQS. The result reports that higher MQS positively impacts the per one billion people from other criminal cases. No matter how we change the sample size loss, the results are robust. And the key policy implica implication of this study. First, the government should pay attention to prevent the risk of decline in food safety levels in the short term when national food safety standards are higher. Second, we should strengthen the supervision to increase the cost of food safety crimes while uh, simultaneously improve the food MQS. Third, the MQS must adapt to the level of economic and social development, especially must adapt to the government's supervision intensity. I can, uh, this is my acknowledgement. Uh, thank you so much. That's all. Thank you very much. Any questions? All right. Uh, now, the next speaker, 
is from Huazhou Agricultural University, Ming Hui Ho. Whenever you're ready, the mic is yours. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming to the presentation. My name is Ming Hui Ho. Today, I would like to uh, share the study entitled can a knowledge calendar improve dietary knowledge evidence from a field experiment in rural China? Uh, next, I will sorry. Next, I will introduce this research from the following five parts. The first part is the background of this study. In globally, as well knowing, improving dietary knowledge has shown to help help people pe uh, adjust their eating behavior and nutrient intake. However, studies have shown that people's dietary knowledge level is relatively low, and there are even many misconceptions. To address this issue, previous studies have explored a variety of information interventions to improve dietary knowledge, such as nutrition labeling, nutrition education, or knowledge training. In fact, information intervention programs that include both education and training are typically uh, costly. Uh, in China, uh, the rural residents' dietary knowledge remains relatively poor. However, fewer studies have investigated how to improve dietary knowledge. Uh, investigating how to increase rural residents' dietary knowledge has great significance for improving their dietary habits. So, an effective and inexpensive uh, intervention is therefore urgently needed to improve their dietary knowledge. Um, so the research person, uh, so the uh, present research thus seeks to improve the dietary knowledge of rural residents using an effective and low cost information intervention, such as uh, in the form of a knowledge calendar. Uh, additionally, the contribution of this paper mainly include the following three points. First, we adopt an effective and inexpensive intervention. Second, we review the active learning effect of the inter uh, uh, of the dietary knowledge in rural residents. Third, there is heterogeneity in the treatment effect of knowledge calendar. Uh, to access the impact of information intervention in form of knowledge calendar on rural residents' dietary knowledge, we conducted a field experiment in Hubei province. Figure 1 shows the experiment profile. Uh, first, uh, first uh, uh, baseline survey was conducted uh, in uh, 2019 July uh, in order to collect uh, basic information and the uh, dietary knowledge level of household uh, before the intervention. And then we conducted our intervention in November 2020. Um, all samples were randomly divided into two groups one half as the treatment group and the other half as the control group. Uh, next, we conducted the in-line survey six months later in June 2021. Uh, in the end, there were 153 samples in the control group and 155 samples in the treatment group and 139 of them used the knowledge calendar. Uh, specifically, in the treatment group, a household were offered a knowledge calendar for 2021 with the description of a knowledge calendar uh, uh, of a uh, dietary knowledge. One month represents one page of the calendar, so there were 12 pages in total, and one and each page include four different four different uh, uh, dietary knowledge items. So there were uh, 48 items in total. Conversely, in the control group. Household receive a regular calendar for 2021 with a description of the new, new year greeting. Uh, based on the two wave panel data, we can we calculate some keywords. First, we calculate the correct ratio uh, of dietary knowledge. Uh, specifically, in baseline surveys, the dietary knowledge index was uh, designed. In the following up survey, three dietary knowledge indexes were calculate. Uh, from the um, calendar time sheet, we can find that DKI1 
is the correct ratio of the dietary knowledge question from the first six pages of the knowledge calendar to investigate the uh, farmer's graphs for the dietary information from the first six pages of the no uh, knowledge calendar. DKI2 is the correct ratio for the, of the dietary knowledge questions from the later six pages to test the farmer's active learning effects for the dietary information from the later six pages. DKS3 is the correct ratio of the dietary knowledge question from uh, 12 pages to com comprehensively in investigate the farmer's master for all the dietary information from the 12 pages. So uh, table two reports the dietary knowledge of the twice rural residents before and after the information intervention. Um, next, considering most studies suggest that social economic characteristics at the, uh, the characteristics may affect the dietary knowledge. Therefore, we measured some independent variables at the individual level and the household level. Uh, besides, to check the baseline, sorry, to check the baseline um, balance, we report a summary statistics for each independent variable in table four and uh, table five. Um, comparing the treatment group to the control group before the information intervention, while the results suggest a not good balance for some variables, uh, between the treatment and control groups. To relieve selection bears problems, we would adopt a, a propensity score matching method to balance the variables of the treatment group and the control groups. Uh, so in the third part, I'm going to present the empir um, empirical strategy used in this study to evaluate the effects of a knowledge calendar on rural residents that we uh, knowledge. We employed the DID model. According to the DID method, uh, the general model can be written as equation one, where Y donates the correct ratio of that tree knowledge, DKI. The dummy variable T is one for household from the treatment group and zero for control group, and D is a paired uh, dummy variable. Uh, beta 3 is therefore the difference in differences is uh, estimate to, um, uh, to, Im to improve the efficiency of estimation and the control for heterogeneity we built on the adjusted model in um, equation 3. Uh, moreover, considering the significant difference in some variables between the treatment group and uh, the control group we first employed the PSMDID to estimate uh, equation three to solve the problem of simple selection bears. Um, to identify the, pro uh, the identification the produce for estimating the above equations is summarized as follows. First, uh, we calculate the difference in the DKI. Second, um, we use the uh, DID method and the PSM DID method to estimate the effects of information intervention. Third, uh, we you have test two the robust okay, um, test the robust check. Finally, a set of uh, heterogeneity analysis. Um, table. Uh, Let's look at the results of this study. Table six uh, reports the difference the difference in differences of the DKIs. Um, the result indicated that information intervention has a certain effect on improving the dietary uh, knowledge of rural residents. Uh, second, we estimate the treatment effect of the knowledge calendar based on all traced samples. Uh, tables, uh, the results are shown in table seven, uh, specifically in terms of DKI one, um, after correcting the simple selection pairs, uh, the estimate value of beta 3 is uh, 0 0.047, that is providing the data information from first six pages of the knowledge calendar to rule residents can improve the data knowledge by 4.7%. Uh, and similarly, for the uh, DKI2 and the DKI3, the data knowledge of rural residents increased uh, 
um, six percent and uh, five point two percent. Um, third, to further to further test the robustness of the result, we also conduct a robust check by excluding six uh, uh, sixteen samples that do not use knowledge calendar from the treatment group. So the results are shown in table eight, consistent with the results in table seven. Um, the debt knowledge increased by 5.3% to 6.1%. Finally, we um, explored the heterogeneous impact. Over the knowledge, overall, the knowledge calendar has a great impact on that three knowledge of rural lessons aged, aged younger, those with high, high level education and without of um, employment and so on. Um, that's about the empirical analysis. The main conclusion of this study are summarized, summarized as follows. First, a knowledge calendar is an effective and expensive intervention. Second, actively, uh, actively learning effect for the intervention using a knowledge calendar. Uh, third, um, we also can observe the heterogeneity in the treatment effects of the knowledge calendar on that three knowledge by different groups. Um, so based on these conclusions, this research has three point, uh, three uh, policy implications. First, in order to improve the technology of rural residents in developing countries, one effective and the potential way to carry out an information intervention by using a knowledge calendar. A knowledge calendar uh, intervention targeting at the household who have the characteristics such as uh, um, re uh, like, uh, relatively young, have a higher education level and so on. Well, for the household who are relatively old, have a lower education, uh, we should uh, uh, explore more effective and cost efficiency information intervention method. Um, at last, uh, our study faced several limitations. First, uh, we only consider the, the impact of information intervention on that three knowledge while do not um, examine the impacts of knowledge calendar on food consumption behaviors. Second, uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, this study uh, only used uh, seven, uh, three, 300 um, farmers in Hubei province. So in the future, it is, it is necessary to extend the sample size. Uh, finally, observe, observe the implementation of the field experiment in this study is not perfect. So uh, it may be affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. So in the future, uh, the implementation of the field experiment should be improved by avoiding the external shocks. Uh, that's all for my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we, I don't think we're going to have time for um, this presentation, but we can save the question for later. Our next speaker, Zhe Hao Wu from Zhejiang University. The floor is yours. Are you online? Uh, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay, I, I can't find my PPT. If you need more time, we can move on to the next speaker. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay, okay. Can you see my PPT? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Okay, okay. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Zhi Hao Wu from Zhejiang University. It's my pleasure to report my study to you. Uh, the title of my study is the Impact Evaluation of the Safety Scandal of Pork International Trade. Evidence from the 2011 Chinese pig raising industry scandal. Food safety scandals can have negative economic and social impacts. Clarifying the economic impact of scandals can help to better respond to them and optimize product quality regulation. 
So it is necessary to first answer how important food safety scandals are in Parkland. The literature examining food safety scandals uh, from an economic perspective can be divided into three parts. The motivations of the consequences to and the public governance following food scandals. The literature on economic consequences of scandals is focusing on domestic sales or on firm performance. The impact on international market demand has not received sufficient attention. However, the impact of food safety scandals on international trade is increasing because of the uh, globalization of trade and the media reports. The literature examining the impact of food safety scandals on international trade in agricultural products is understudied. Uh, this study uh, using a quasi natural experiment associated with the pig raising industry scandal and a DID method to analyze the impact of food safety scandals on trade. The contributions of our study is uh, filling the, uh, the scant literature uh, on the scan, uh, scandal in de developing countries and provide a method to assess the exact uh, magnitude of the causal impact. The background of the 2011 pig raising industry scandal is that uh, CCTV2 uh, broadcast uh, some pig farmers illegally added excess limit powder and sold pork to the Shanghui group, uh, whose stock price had a 10% decrease in a day. The media coverage made the public think all the pork with limit powder contaminated. Limit powder is commonly used in clinical and veterinary medicine, while pig farmers use it as feed additive to improve average daily gain and carcass lean content of pig. However, it may cause poisoning of consumed in excess by humans. Attitude to pork with limit powder are different. Limit powder is uh, licensed as a fit, fit additive in countries such as US and Canada and so on. But in other 124 countries and regions, limit powder is banned. The scandal led to the perception that uh, pork products, products import from countries where limit powder is allowed uh, are contaminated, lead to consumer resistance. Uh, this is our main regression specification. The dependent variable y is the natural log logarithm of import quantity and import value. Vaccine is an indicator for the countries where pork products are contaminated. Post T is an indicator for the time after the scandal. XPD are control variables and the y, uh, gamma C, mu P, uh, lambda T are country fixed effect, product fixed effect, and yield by mouse fixed effect. Beta 1 identifies the impact of the scandal on imports of pork products from contaminated countries. Mostly data on China's pork products from uh, 27 countries between 2001 and 2015 is from the IRTDS. And China and its pork import partners' macroeconomic data is from WDI. Uh, see table A1 and table A2 for specific, specific HS8 codes and countries. We perform summary statistics on the samples according to the trade control and before after, and we find imports from countries in treatment groups um, produce uh, significant changes before and after the scandal. We further plot the time trend of the residuals in treatment and control groups after controlling for the time trend. After the event, there is a significant decrease in the residuals of the treat treatment group countries, which is crucial for the construction of the DID design. Our baseline results are listed in Table 2. We prefer the results in columns 5 and 6 for they contrast the completed variables. The estimated coefficients on uh, rack times post are statistically significant at the uh, 1% level, which indicates a decline in about 28.6% in the quantity of the imports and about 43.1% in the value of imports after the scandal. 
We also estimate the effect on yield by mouse dummies by controlling country product and yield by mouse fixed effect to formally test the common trend assumption. We do many robustness tests and falsification tests to, uh, to test that our uh, stats results are indeed driven by a shift in product level attitude toward contaminated pork products. The heterogeneity analysis shows that the scandal has a stronger weakening effect on the import of pig offer products with great residual contamination perceived by consumers. You have two and, minutes. And uh, the scandal causes the la largest reduction in pork imports from the, uh, Canada. To construct a systematic measure the short-term and the long-term effects of the scandal on the imports of pork products, we incrementally increase the post-scandal sample and thus investigate the impact of the scandal on imports of pork products over time. The results show that the effect of the scandal of Chinese, China's pork imports are long-lasting. The internal validity validity of DID design may not be met because if China, Chinese consumers switch the importing pork products from control group countries after the scandal, it would let DID design to overestimate the impact. But the synthetic control measure can avoid the above by constructing a virtual uh, control unit. Our results suggest that the con con quantity of import is uh, plummeted by 44.3% uh, and the value of import is uh, plummeted by 37.8% uh, following, following the scandal. We also construct a DDD model by adding another actual product. The results show that whichever product category is chosen to construct a new product level differential, the results are generally consistent with the DID results. Uh, there, uh, these are our results, and the implications are the occurrence of safety scandals can have an Im impact on the international trade of that, uh, of that product. In the context of trade globalization, no country can be left alone in terms of food safety. International agricultural exporters should pay close attention to changes not only in their own market, but also in the market of exporting countries to cope with the unaccepted unaccep shocks. The time is up. Oh, oh thank you. Timing. Thank you. Any questions? All right, then let's welcome our last speaker today. Qing Xinxie from Nanjing Agricultural University. Okay, thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes, I think you might be a little too close to the mic. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? We, can we hear her? Uh, you might want to step away from your mic because we are hearing uh, echoing here, and we can't hear you clearly. Okay. Can you try to talk a little bit more? Like to test it out the sound? What about now? Can you hear me now? You have to choose a different source, audio source. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, look at the microphone the... from her end. Yeah, from her end, the mouse either bottom left. Right? If you see the bottom, huh? there's a microphone. You see a, 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 mic a microphone. So, microphone. And then look for select a microphone. So, microphone. Yeah. Yes. Find the microphone button, and there's a uh, mute, and a, there's an arrow next to mute, and then you can choose different source. Can you hear me now? I have changed it. Yeah, the sound is uh, echoing a lot. Um, are, are you very close to your microphone, or? Uh, but I have changed all the microphone. Uh, it's getting better, actually. 
Can you? Can I, okay, I, I will speak louder. Uh, no, it's not about volume, and uh, it's it's good for now. I think it's doable now, right? Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks for cooperating with us. Um, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, good afternoon and good morning, everyone. I am Qin Xin Xie from Nanjing Agricultural University. The topic of my presentation today is disparate changes of living standards in China, perspective from angles coefficients. My presentation will be divided into five parts. Economists assume that consumers' utility depends on the consumption of goods and services. Thus, consumption upgrading rather than income growth can better reflect the improvement of living standard. In particular, adequate food consumption is the most important basic necessities for all people. Previous studies have defined and have done much research on angles coefficient. Scholars therefore use it to reflect the living standard for the population. Now, when we look at the trend of, angle, uh, of income and angles coefficient in China in this figure, we observe that there is a discontinuity around 2000. Before that, income grew uh, slowly while angles coefficient dropped rapidly. And after 2000, income increased fiercely, but the decreasing trend of angles coefficient flattened out. What's more, there is still a large gap in angles coefficient between high income and low income groups, especially in urban areas. Therefore, the purpose of this paper is to investigate the driving forces for the changes of angle co angles coefficient and to analyze the heterogeneous patterns in living standard among different socioeconomic groups. According to the definition, angles coefficient is determined by three factors, household income, food price, and dietary pattern. Over past decades, China has experienced remarkable economic growth dramatic food price increase, and a rapid nutrition transition. So the changes in angles coefficient can be attributed to four factors, income effect, price effect, structure effect, and quantity effect. This paper proposes a decomposition method of angles coefficient and takes these factors into account comprehensively. In the second part, we will detail the methodology to decompose angles coefficient. According to the definition, angles coefficient can be expressed as equation one. Um, we can separate food structure from food quantity if we use this expression, lowercase q divided by uppercase q. Here, lowercase q is the quantity of consumption of each food, and upper, uppercase q is the total amount of food consumption. So in this way, this expression can be considered as a structure of food consumption. And then we get equation two. The variation of angles coefficient from time t to uh, t plus one can be expressed as equation three. As mentioned in the introduction part, it can be decomposed into four parts. This is structure effect, price effect, content effect, and this is income effect. Following four steps, we can finally get a decomposition equation, but due to time constraints, the four steps are not clarified here. And the final decomposition equation is shown as follows. Here is structure effect, here price effect, quantity effect, and income effect. The data we use in this study is extracted from China Health and Nutrition Survey. In order to remove the heterogeneity in household demography, angles coefficient is adjusted using the total equivalent scale for each family. And finally, we get a balanced panel and further group them into low and high income subgroups in both urban and rural areas. Um, the next part shows the results. This table reports the four decomposition effects. Um, we can see that the decline in angles coefficient caused by income effect and content effect is partially offset by the positive structure effect and price effect. Now from here, we analyze the heterogeneity 
of the four uh, different socioeconomic groups. The figure shows the decomposition effects. First, we discuss the living standard improvement. Um, this table shows angles coefficient at different period for different subgroups. We can see the decline in angles coefficient in urban area is larger than the rural counterparts. That means urban families enjoy greater improvement in living standards. Second, the income effect does not show a big difference between income groups, both among urban and among rural families, but the urban groups enjoy a greater income effect than the rural groups. This finding indicates that um, the rural groups benefit less from income growth. Further, we can calculate the gap between the variation of angles coefficient and the income effect. And the gap measures how much income effect has been weakened. And the results show that income effect is weakened more for rural families. Third, a positive, uh, a positive price, price effect is detected in all subgroups, particularly. Yeah, yeah. OK, thank you. Um, Low-income low families have larger price effects than high-income families, both in urban and rural area. And that is even higher in uh, rural area. This shows poor families and rural families are more vulnerable to food price increase. Fourth, we observe a positive structure effect in rural low-income families here, but a slightly negative structure effect in other three groups here. Um, a positive structure effect indicates consumer's diet is switching from cheaper food to more expensive food. Um, that is to say, positive structure effect implies the early stage of nutrition transition. So poor families in rural area are still at the early stage, while rural high income families and the urban families already enter a new phase of nutrition transition. Fifth, the continuity effect is negative in all subgroups, and the magnitude is much larger in low income groups than that of high income group groups both in urban and rural areas. This means lower income groups are undergoing a rapid nutrition transition and higher income groups are ahead of lower, lower income ones in the dietary upgrading progress. Finally, we draw a conclusion. First, food price, uh, food price increase is a major obstacle to improve household living standard. Second, income growth is a key driving force to improve families' living standard. Third, the effects vary considerably between different socioeconomic groups. Rural and poor residents are more vulnerable and deserve more attention. Okay, that's all my presentation. Thank you for your listening. Thank you very much. All right, I think we have perfect timing. Uh, we have uh, six more minutes. Um, any question for our speakers? I guess I'm gonna take advantage of being a moderator and ask a couple of questions. So I have a question for our third speaker, Wen Fan Su. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Okay, um, I, I just saw a question in the chat uh, from Chen Fang, Dr. Chen Fang Liu. Um, so her question is, how did you classify household size uh, into low, high in groups in rural and urban areas? Um, is it for me, right? Yes. Uh, I use the average household income uh, for the five waves. Okay. Um, Yes, you just Thank you. Thank you. answer the question. Thank you. All right. No, my turn? Okay. So I guess my question is, um, 
because soy milk or plant-based milk, uh, specifically soy milk in China has a long, long history. And I'm, I'm wondering if you, uh, again, to the third speaker, uh, Wen Fan Su, uh, did you account for the consumption patterns of consumers um, before the experiment and in the survey? Um, such as if they are, uh, they have, they have been consuming soy milk, uh, on, on what basis, you know, daily basis or a monthly basis or weekly basis. Okay. Thank you for your question. Um, and in our questionnaire, we, uh, did ask our, uh, consumers about their attention, uh, in, in purchase intention of plant-based milk, uh, such as have you ever buy plant-based milk or um, have, uh, will you buy plant-based milk in the future uh, to know more about their um, perception or intention uh, of purchase behavior? Thank you. Yes. Um, so um, you measure if they have purchased before and if they are willing to purchase in the future, am I right? Yes. yes. Uh, but you didn't ask them if they have consumed before. Uh, that's my understanding, right? Yes. Um, yes. Uh, um, uh, I, I think I just, I measured the uh con con conception uh before they um, fill our questionnaire but i didn't report in my presentation um, oh okay uh, i'm just curious thank you yes thank you um guess we have two more minutes i'm going to indulge myself by asking one more question to our sixth speaker uh, Ming Hui Hao. Um, it's a really interesting idea to use a calendar uh, for the nutrition and the food education. I'm just wondering if, there, if you think your experiment could be affected by the COVID-19 pandemic because I rem remember the baseline survey is 2019. The follow-up is in 2021, right? Uh, that's the first question. The second question is, um, did you make sure uh, the household members or um, the calendar readers are actually the food shopper? Thank you. Can you hear me? Ming Hui Hao? Oh, you can, uh, you, can you unmute yourself if you're online? Yeah, I, I did send her a notification, ask to unmute. For whatever reason, proper tech reason, don't worry about it. Um, I, I really enjoy our session today. Thank you all for being here for those, for our speakers. Um, thank you so much for waking up early, giving us so many research ideas. And uh, for those who are attending in person, uh, I hope you have a wonderful evening to close our AAEA session. Thank you. Just want to say hi to Chen Fan. Sure. Hi, Chen Fan. Thank you so much for getting up early. And I uh, really appreciate our uh, Li Jing. Uh, so my pleasure. Thank you. 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 Yeah, um, yeah. Last session. Yeah, so yeah. I really appreciate Li Jing for uh, staying late. No problem. For staying late and for our audience staying late and for our presenters okay. and also audience online for getting up early. And no thank problem. You so thank you all. For our last session. So I think we um, conclude uh, the AAEA China section, all sections perfectly. No, 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 no. This is your the moderator. <laughs> no. yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye.
guess I'll, I will see you on next year. Yeah, and, and thank you, Yun Yi. Right. I saw you there as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Take care. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see you next time. And uh, click that end button. Yeah, and we should stop recording. Sure.